Hi again, having a very productive tarot day, it would seem. Uh, and I'm here again to do another reading. Um, this time for my friend Bobby. Um, so I've done as I usually do, um, which is shuffle before. And uh, here we go. Okay, Bobby. So your first card, your overall situation, is the... Ah, uh, my light is fading out. The Two of Swords. The Lord of Peace. I think I'm going to start doing that just so you guys have a, an idea of what the cards mean as I go. Um, your crossing factor, uh, the obstacle, the thing that's in front of you, is the Lovers. Ah, uh, sorry. This glare is just horrendous. Oh dear. Okay, well anyway, you get you get the idea. Uh some of you already know what that card looks like, I'm sure. Um okay, and then your the root of the situation sort of what's grounding you, what you have at your disposal to to deal with it um or sort of the one of the primary sources of the issue um is the 10 of discs, the Lord of Wealth. Sorry, that's the technical golden dawn way of referring to the miners, the Lord of Blank, and they all have these little titles. Um, okay, your the past is signified by the Knight of Cups, and I don't remember his specific title. I'm sure it's very fancy, Lord of the Palaces of blah 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 or something like that. Um, your crowning card, sort of the, the higher self, the intuitive information, what you know is sort of like the best you can get out of it, um, is the Five of Cups, the Lord of Disappointment. Uh, and the immediate future is A218, the moon, which again, you can't really see. Oh, for goodness sake. There we go. That's nice. Okay. And then how you see yourself in the situation, <laughs> oh, the reading I did before is the exact same thing, is the Four of Discs, the Lord of Power. There is someone honking their horn outside, and I really wish they would stop. Your environmental factors are the Ten of Wands, the Lord of Oppression. Your uh, hopes and fears, desires, that whole stuff, is um, the Princess of Discs, one of my favorites. And the overall outcome is a ooh, lust, a two eleven, and also with that come at no extra charge uh, the three of wands and the fool. Okay, excellent, excellent. And your deep card, as some people call it, or your your card underneath it all, is the queen of cups. There she is. Um, which is sort of interesting. Um, okay. Hmm. All right. Well, the easiest way of putting this is, uh, God, it's sort of like the other reading I did uh, today for Brian. Uh, <laughs> really funny, actually. You're sort of at an impasse with someone. Um, I would say over money. Uh, in some way. And I think that, um, again, you know, you, you sort of feel very secure where you are. And I think that, you know, uh, perhaps this other person is, is really, uh, maybe gunning for something that's a little idealistic or, you know, I think the Knight of Cups in the past sort of signifies, I, I don't get the sense that it's you. I get the sense that it's someone else uh, who you are connected to financially. And I think they have, they've sort of recently gotten some big idea in their head to do something. Um, and, you know, I, I think, again, it's sort of... Uh, I mean, I could also see it as you, to be honest, but I, I, I don't, I don't get that sense. Maybe I'm wrong. 
either way, um, I think you're not quite <laughs> you're not quite seeing their uh, inspiration in it, or they're not seeing yours. This light is driving me nuts. I'm just really sorry about this. Now you can see all my wrinkles. Great. <laughs> um, sorry about that. Okay, so um, you know because your your crossing card is the lovers, and the lovers is to me a card that represents sort of coming into contact with the other, some sort of alien entity in some way that's that sort of broadens our perspective, you know, and. Um, it's also a card that sort of sometimes represents divine inspiration or you know sort of the the intuition striking um striking our consciousness with sort of a wave and and that's be that being the obstacle you know uh, i think that's interesting i think that it sort of speaks to the idealism of the situation um, on a more practical level, because I do think that this reading is very, very much grounded in sort of pragmatism and um, what is best to do financially and all that. I, I do think that it, it could just, you know, be the way you relate to this person is sort of, is maybe... Uh, kind of awkward right now because of this uh you know again like it's not exactly like you're having any fights about it you know it's not like you're in the heat of an argument over this issue it's just that i i don't think you really know where you stand on it you're not exactly as gung-ho about it as they are um and i think there's sort of an ambivalence it's sort of like you could go either way um you know, you're not really too swayed by either. I think if you did have to choose a preference, um, I think the four of, of dis as your, how you see yourself sort of says that you, you kind of want to stay where you are, but at the same time, you know, you also are secure in your relationship with this person and maybe, you know, you want, uh, at the same time, you, you, you do want to stay with them or you know um it's not like you want to break it off and i think that you you do want to do what's best for them but also what's best for your relationship with them um okay your environmental factors uh are interesting given that because you've got um, the Ten of Wands in your environmental position. And the Ten of Wands being the Lord of Oppression is sort of the idea that, you know, someone in this situation that is not you is sort of bossing you around a little bit, or they're trying to exert their will over yours and sort of not giving you much of a choice. And it's sort of, it feels very conflicting. I, I mean, um, not conflicting, I'm sorry. Uh, constraining, in a way. It's sort of a claustrophobic situation. Excuse me, I think. I think you see that there's really only one way to go about it, even though you would like to be able to entertain two, you know? It, which, is a, which is sort of unfortunate. Um, I think that maybe this person is, uh, or in general, I mean, the situation, it's just like you, in some ways, you, this is your only choice um, to sort of um, let this person do what it is they have in mind, and I'm not really sure if it involves moving. Um, I'm, I'm not quite, well, I could sort of see that. There's a, there's a little bit of mercury in here that could represent transportation. It def certainly represents kind of communication and logic and that sort of thing. And so it's definitely an issue in which you're talking about resources um, and sort of where to put them. And, uh, you know, maybe that's more what it is. Maybe this person has kind of a wild idea for an investment or a business venture. 
you know, and, and they're not quite seeing it very rationally. They're sort of just getting very excited about it because it's something they want to do. And, you know, I can understand why you, you would want to support that, which is good. But at the same time, you sort of want them to temper it a little bit and maybe think about, think about both sides as opposed to one side. I think this is a very one-sided thing. And that's the other issue that the lovers are sort of giving us here as your obstacle. It's sort of like being open to the other. You know, I don't know how much how much two-way dialogue you're actually having. I think the dialogue is probably very much one-way, if there is any, you know. Um, you know, and I think that's sort of what the Queen of Cups as your deep card is also saying, you know, I think that represents you as sort of this very passive figure who doesn't really want to upset the flow of this situation, you know, you're sort of just letting it happen. Um, and you're, at the same time, you're ruminating over it. You know, it is something that you're thinking about deeply, but you pro you're not someone who will let on to that. She's a Cancer with a dash of Gemini, and interestingly enough, Gemini is um, also the lovers. And, um, you know, I, I do think uh, she has a tendency, the Queen of Cups, to sort of retreat and not really want to talk about what she's thinking. And so I think that's what you're doing here. I think you do have feelings on this, very deep feelings, but um, but you don't really want to express them because you're afraid of upsetting this person. This person, um, you know, this more mature male figure, the Knight of Cups, who's got this idea, is is probably sometimes prone to sort of random anger. Sometimes things probably set him off uh, that you wouldn't expect to. Uh, he's fire of water, and those two elements don't really get along, and so a, the spontaneity of water is sort of an oxymoron, um, at least uh, hermetically speaking. And so sometimes his personality can be a little volcanic very unexpectedly, and because he can't handle his own volcanic emotion, he sometimes just blows up and looks like an ass, basically. Um, I, this is not necessarily all the time, but I can understand why you would sort of want to make sure that they're very placid uh, and not giving them the space to blow up. Um, okay. The... Uh, your higher self is um, is giving you the five of cups, um, and I think this uh, this sort of speaks to the situation again, as it always does, on a number of different levels. I think um, the five is the Lord of Disappointment, and so I think you know deep down that whatever uh, plan uh, your friend is is concocting is probably going to leave you both unhappy. It's not going to be best for your relationship or for him personally or for you personally. Um, you know, and uh, it's not... I think you just know that, and that's sort of why... I don't know. I, Mm. It just, I think you know that it has a high chance of failure, um, or just of of not leaving you as happy as y'all think it's going to, or at least for in his case, um, you know. So that I can understand is is not easy, but at the same time, maybe you should communicate that. I think bottling it all up isn't exactly healthy either. If you want this relationship to really be two-sided, it has to sort of be about both of you, right? Um, okay, so I'm at 14 and a half minutes, and I'm going to have to do part two, as I always do. Okay, uh, see you in part two.